Welcome to The Scoop with Erica Crouppen. Your host is the owner of Crouppen's Poop and Scoopin. She's built a six-figure dog waste removal business and loves talking a little crap with like-minded folks. Starting and growing a small business can be scary, but Erica wants to share some tips and tricks that she's picked up along the way as she continues her entrepreneurial journey. She hopes this podcast will educate and inspire you to think outside the corporate box and do something a little crappy, like scoop dog poop. And now, here's Erica. What's up, Scoop Podcast? I'm your host, Erica Krupen. And on today's episode, we are going to talk about the market analysis section of your business plan. If you're new here, hi, welcome. I appreciate you stopping by the Scoop Podcast. If you are a pooper scooper or if you are somebody that is interested in getting into the dog waste removal industry, I think that this is a great resource for you to learn some information. I try to do deep dives into the business, my experiences, and eh, you know some other things every once in a while. But for the past couple weeks, we are talking about the business plan because I've been in business for five years. I started this business just on a whim. I said, I'm going to start this business and just hopped into it. Here's the issue is I did not come up with a formal business plan. And I truly believe that's the reason why I have been stuck the past couple, like year, year and a half. I can't excel or I'm struggling to excel to the next level. And it's due to my organization or lack thereof when it comes to the business plan and the future of the business. I want clear goals and I need clear expectations. And in general, if we are trying to get somewhere, we need to have a destination, right? If we're just out wandering around and there's no destination, how are we supposed to get there? A business plan will give you the structure. It will make you think about the business, think about your goals, think about your your market, think about how much money you want to make, what you want out of this business. Because of that, I am backtracking, I'm writing a business plan, and I've been bringing you guys along the journey with me. So if you're interested in hearing all about that, stay tuned. This section of the business plan actually excites me. It's the market analysis part. I like to do research. I like to investigate. I probably should have been like a private investigator at one point in my life. I I truly enjoy it. And in 2023, Doing this type of research is easier than ever because everything pretty much is at our fingertips. You can do a lot of research online. Now, can you do everything online? I don't think so. I think hitting the pavement, I think talking to dog owners, talking to people in different demographics, different um, economic situations is important to um, and have that person-to-person interaction. Um, but you definitely want to do a lot of research online. So this section is called market analysis. And this is where you're going to define your market. You're going to want to figure out who are you trying to service? Residential, commercial properties. Uh, Commercial properties would be your parks, your condos, your HOAs. Uh, Figure out the needs of these type of customers and the demand of the dog waste removal industry in your area or the area that you're trying to service. Now, the first thing that you want to think about, it's not really the first thing. This is just the first thing on my list. These could go in any order as long as it's within the market analysis section. I thought it was a good idea to figure out who who is my target market? Who am I trying to speak to? Who is my avatar? I want to service residential properties and commercial properties. Those are different. And you want to do research on both. So with residential customers, you're going to want somebody that takes their dog outside. You don't want somebody that just lets their dog poop in the house. It, You guys, it happens more, more often than I would like to admit. Uh, we get those calls. But if you're the type of person that wants to go into somebody's house and clean a bunch of dog poop out of a back bedroom in a house that stinks really bad, that might be your jam. That might be something that you're interested in doing. Think about that. That's that's a different process. That's not something that I'm completely confident and comfortable in, but there's a need for it. So think about that. But if you just want to do residential, uh, the standard where the dog goes outside and you know uses the bathroom in the front yard, backyard, or side yard in a pen, 
um, and the homeowner doesn't take the dog on walks all the time. Because if you are trying to market to a customer that walks their dog all the time and that's where the dog goes to the bathroom, a lot of times the need for our service isn't there because the dog waste isn't piling up in the yard. So essentially, we want somebody that lets their dog go outside in the backyard, uses the bathroom there. They have the strong desire for convenience or the need for our services due to physical um, impairments. They're super busy. They just don't feel like doing it. People would call that lazy. Oh, well, they don't feel like doing it. We live here in America. Land of the free, I guess. Are we, are we still free? I don't know. That's That's another topic for another time. But you get what I'm saying. Now, what what type of customers, like uh, income level, are you trying to market towards? Are you trying to market towards the disabled community? A lot of times, if they are on disability, their income's probably a lot lower because they're on a fixed income. Uh, or are you trying to network to somebody that's more middle class, middle upper class, high end customers? You need to think about what customers have the expendable income to be able to provide your service at the price point that you want that you want to charge me personally when i started i was charging very low right and so it was like 1375 a week it was super cheap and so i had a lot of people in the lower income areas that could afford my services at that time and i worked those areas for quite some time but obviously that comes with some challenges uh, especially if you want to raise your rates, you want to upgrade. Um, a lot of times they're not able to to handle and be able to pay for those for those upcharges. And when I raised my rates up to $18, $20 per service base, I lost a lot of those customers, but I was able to gain customers in different areas that had that expendable income. So you want to think about that as well. And then on the other side of it, your commercial accounts and this is going to consist of HOAs. If you're servicing a customer's house at an HOA, that's considered residential. But if you're servicing the HOA property, common areas, either scooping up the, the park that they have or the, the common fields where the dogs go to the restroom and there's dog waste stations there and the association is paying you, the company is cutting you a check, that would be considered uh, commercial. And you can also do dog parks, apartments, condos, townhomes, duplex complexes. There's a lot of options. I feel like I could go on and on and on. And then you're also going to want to figure out like what the demand is in your areas. Uh, is there a high dog rate in the cities that you want to service? I did some research because I wasn't able to figure out how to find how many dogs or registered dogs there were in my city. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just haven't figured that out yet. But what I did was is I went to the city's website to figure out uh, residential pet limits, like how many pets, dogs, or whatnot can each each city have. And here's just a couple of numbers I came up with. Westland, the max is three. Canton is five. Crazy. Wayne is two. Redford is three. Livonia is three. Northville is three. Uh, and th these are these are the areas that I service. So you can go through, figure that out, figure out what the min and the max is. And then if you can figure out how many, you know, how many dogs are registered, that information could probably, probably help you as well. And then also talking to people in the community, either on Facebook or out there, you're just asking like, hey, have you ever heard of the dog waste removal service? And they're probably like, no. And then come up with your elevator speech and just ask, like, if you were to use this service on, on a scale from one to 10, What's your probability of using a service like this? And if they say no or yes, just ask, well, why? Why would you not want to use it or why would you want to? And just keep in mind, this type of service is still is fairly new. The industry is still newer. I mean, it's been around for a while, but it's still kind of unheard of by a lot of people. And that's an intimate thing. It is. And a lot of people almost get embarrassed about having to use our services because the the stigma and the shame that comes along with it. And then other people are like, I don't care. I love this service. So you get a mixed crowd. So just keep that in mind. Uh, people can be cautious or, you know, maybe not want to broadcast that they're using your service because they're afraid of what the public will say, the trolls on the Internet. <laughs> people are crazy. A huge shout out to today's episode sponsor, Jobber. 
the number one operations management software for home service business owners. Jabber is a software I use to run, grow, and manage my small pooper scooper business. Jabber helps me handle the admin tasks quicker so I can focus on growing my business and getting more me time back. From creating custom quotes all the way to getting paid my money, Jabber has my back. Yeah, we're pretty much best friends, but if I had to choose my favorite feature, I'd say the mobile app. I can create the quotes, edit the jobs, communicate with customers, and keep my eye on the staff right from my phone. If you're a home service entrepreneur looking to level up your business, look more professional, and save time, head over to jabber.com slash croupin to start your 14-day free trial and get 20% off your first six months with my special link. Now, let's get back to the scoop. And then my uh, my favorite part of this whole process is analyzing your competition. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> You're going to want to do a Google search. This is the easiest way to do it. Type in dog waste removal services near me or pet waste removal services near me and see how many companies pop up. 67 of them popped up around me within a 25 mile radius. All of them are not just specifically dog waste removal services, but they offer this type of service either on their Google listing or on their website. 67, that is crazy. So you're going to figure that out and then you're going to just investigate. You're going to look through all the profiles. You're going to look at their reviews, right? That's what I did. I went through the handful of companies that were in my area back in the day because this is one one thing within the business plan that I did do. I just wanted to see what, you know, what the companies were doing good and what the companies were doing bad because I wanted to take notes. I wanted to obviously do the do the things that customers were raving about and then I wanted to make sure that I really did not do the issues for the negative reviews. That was that was really important to me, and I think that's what helped me with my customer service skills because I took note and uh, made the changes. So yeah, some of the positive uh, aspects that I took away from the reviews was you know professionalism, people love that stuff, punctuality, quality, responsiveness, value, excellent customer service, affordable, easy to sign up with. Uh, technician texts when they're on their way. These are some of my positive points. Now, the affordable part may be uh, controversial or not affordable to everybody since I have raised my rates. A lot of my customers that used me from the beginning would say that my rates are no longer affordable because I, I don't fall within their budget at this point. Uh, but that was a, just a decision I needed to make to be able to scale my business. So you can't you can't please everybody, you know? And then some negative points that I found with the the customers or the, the other companies that I was researching is lack of communication, which I know we've talked about this, you guys. You have to communicate with your customer. And this is where a lot of service industries fall short because when they are communicating with their customer, they're not communicating the way that the customer needs the communication. A lot of the service industries providers are men, right? And a lot of times we're dealing with the woman of the house. I would have to say over 90% of my customers, I'm dealing with the woman of the house. How do women need to be communicated to? How do they accept communication? So you need to think about that when you're dealing with your with dealing with your customers. It's not how you receive communication and how you want to give it. It's how your customer is going to. Okay, that's a whole as a whole rabbit hole that we could go down. And I actually am diving into this personality test called DISC, D-I-S-C. It's a personality. It's a person, hold on a second, my phone. My phone's going crazy. What's going on, guys? Okay, I'm back to it. It's a whole personality thing. Check it out. Uh, Adam was telling me about it and he he had me take the personality test. So of course now I'm like obsessed trying to figure out what I am, what my husband is. It's, you know, it's a whole rabbit hole. 
<laughs> and then also people really don't like it when you don't notify the person when a, a, a service is being canceled or moved or making up excuses back to back to back. Like just be straight up, just be honest. And if you do have to make an excuse, uh, make it a good one, right? And don't make them so close together that people are are super frustrated. And sometimes this is what I heard from my cousin when he was doing sales. He said, no, no story, no glory. So sometimes you you do have to kind of, you know, buff buff out a reason of why you weren't able to show up instead of telling the truth. Is that ethically right? I don't know. It's up to you. You make that decision. But if your big toe hurts, maybe be like, hey, I broke my big toe. I can't come today. But if you went out and partied last night and you got all drunk and you're puking all over the place, I wouldn't text your customer and be like, oh, I got hammered last night. I can't show up like, you know, that you can't do you can't do that. Just live your life right and be be respectful, be responsible, and be um, ethical. Because another bad review that I've seen is people with poor business ethics just in general. Uh, people being caught on camera for not scooping, just fake scooping, collecting money and not showing up. Crazy. They don't offer refunds when they provide a, a awful service. Uh, bait and switch, where some companies say that their services is a uh, seven dollars or 13.99 promo and then after that they jack up the rates and people are like whoa i wasn't anticipating paying this um a lot of people don't like contracts you know that's up for debate if companies should have contracts or not uh, poor driving in work vehicles we, we have to be mindful that our vehicles are branded so we need to drive with respect, not cut people off. Don't flick cigarettes out of your window. Uh, don't be texting on your phone while you're driving. Don't be speeding. Don't be a, a, a jackhole. You know, be be safe out there because you're putting your life and other people's lives in danger. And which this is a review I found screaming at people in public while wearing company uniforms. If you're an employee or you have employees, they're representing your business. And if you yourself are a hothead and you have your shirt on, you're representing your company. So you're making your company look bad by acting a fool in your work shirt. Like if you're going to do that, take your work shirt off. Flip it inside out. You know, don't be cray cray. And last but, la last but not least, being... Being forgot to be added onto the schedule, which I've done this before. I forgot to add people on the schedule. But if you do that back to back to back, like, oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. People get irritated. And that was a, a bad review that I seen on the internet. Lots of bad stuff. I had fun. I had fun doing all that research. That was great for me. Uh, the next thing that you're going to want to put in here is your pricing. How 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 do you how do you want to price? Like, how are other people in the market pricing? compared to what you're pricing. There's different ways that companies price. You can do tiered, tiered pricing, which that's what I do. It's based upon the number of dogs, the lot, lot size, and how long it's been since the last clean. That would, the how long it's been since the last clean would factor into their first time cleaning. But the number of dogs and how often you want it cleaned and the lot size would factor in for the, uh, the, the weekly service or bi-weekly service. So that's tiered pricing. Uh, you could do flat rate pricing where it's like, hey, your yard's this size. It doesn't matter how many dogs you have up to set amount. Your price is going to be $30 a week, $20 a week, I don't know, 60 bucks a month, 80 bucks a month, whatever, whatever you come up with. So it's just a flat rate. And the per minute pricing. I personally don't do that, but I've heard of other people doing that. And last but not least, your customer base, which we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier, but this, you want to go a little bit more in depth with it or combine them however you want to roll this one out. But figure out you know, who you want to service. You want to service the residential, the apartment complex, the homeowners association, the dog parks and public spaces, veterinary clinics, events and festivals, elderly and or physically limited individuals, pet focused businesses, the seasonal demand and go in and and write down a description for all of those areas. So for instance, a residential homeowner for me, a homeowner and renters with dogs who want to maintain a clean and hygienic outdoor space. These customers may have a busy schedule or a physical limitation that makes it challenging for them to clean up after their dog regularly. And then apartment or complex condominiums, property managers or owners for multi-use 
multi-unit residential properties that want to provide a clean environment for their tenants and residents with the, with dogs. For me, this section has actually been pretty meaty because I did a nice deep dive. And this has really given me some clarity on exactly who I want to service because I understand I can't, I can't service everyone and anyone. I do hope that this brought you guys some clarity and I hope you like this. Down in the comments or in the review, let me know what you think about this section. Let me know if you think that I've missed something. If you think that, you know, there's other things that need to be added to this section. You guys, I don't know everything. I'm just learning and I'm sharing what I'm learning as I'm going along my journey. So you're coming along this journey with me and I truly, I truly, truly appreciate it. So I'm going to wrap that, that section up. Uh, let's switch over to, I guess, what's going on with me? What's going on with you? For you guys, I hope everything's been going good. Uh, for me... This week was tough. My sweet baby honeys, my Java, completely tore her ACL in her knee. I didn't even know dogs had those. And she has to have surgery on, when you when you guys will be listening to this, Monday at 9 a.m., she's going in for surgery to have a complete ACL repair along with a, mis- a meniscus repair. They're expensive. They are, the surgery is expensive. It's $2,900. I just can't believe it. I'm like, oh my gosh. But of course, for my dog, we're going to figure it out and we're going to pay it. Owning a dog's expensive. And this is why having money put away is really important because, you know, something could be an absolute catastrophe or it could be an inconvenience. So just depending on the situation that you want to put yourself in. And this goes back to your business too. You want to make sure that you have business money put away just in case something happens. And in order to do that, you need to make sure that you're pricing things accordingly. When I was charging $13.75 a week, I was I didn't have money put away. I wasn't able to, to have buffer room. Think about that moving forward. And that's what was going on with me. I've just been low. I haven't really been on social media too much. I am actually taking a detox from information. I don't know about you, guys, but I information overload. I am continuously listening to a new podcast, listening to a new book, just all this information just bow, 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 bow in my head. And it's just too much. So I've decided I'm going to take an information detox. I have a specific book that I'm reading and that's the only book that I'm going to read and listen to. And I am just going to listen to music while I'm out scooping. I'm not going to listen to any other podcasts for a season, just, you know, just for some time. And then that way I'll have a ton of stuff to catch up, catch up on when I'm ready for more information to come into my brain. But I am extremely overloaded. I have too much going on and I really want to focus on building up systems and training videos for the business because I am trying to hire again because I've been pulled back into the field after I let my last employee go and I'm trying to get back out of it. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make the transition much easier and much smoother with having training videos moving forward. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for quite some time and I just haven't. So I've just been recording videos, doing some slight edits and then uploading them onto my YouTube channel under a private, (laughs) under a private playlist, not open to the public. Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll open that up to you guys, but not today. All right, you guys, it was awesome talking to you. I truly appreciate you. This episode will not have a YouTube video going along with it. I don't feel like being on camera this week. I'm having a moment. I'm having a moment. Uh, Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of your pups. And until next time, bye. Thank you for hanging out with Erica Crouppen. She is so grateful and honored you decided to tune in to the Scoop podcast and hopes the information you heard today positively impacts you moving forward in business and life. Follow Erica on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Crouppen's Poopin Scoopin. And don't forget to follow the show in order to get notified when the next edition of The Scoop drops.